Oh, good evening. Uh, you want to hear saying there gives a break. That's that weather guy. He really he really cheers you up, doesn't he? He goes from one extreme to another extreme. Anyway, I get somebody contacted me a day to say, Hey Billy, have you got a bit of stuff staying with you? I says, What do you mean? He says, Last night he shouted Martisha, put a telly off, Martisha, shut the windows and Martisha came a glass of wine. The penny didn't drop, and they actually thought, I've got a bird in here called Martisha. Anyway, tonight, uh, I'm going to change my blog completely different. Now, I thought I, I hope everybody had a very good day today, because the weather was, must admit, really, really good. Um, but I must admit, that wind, jeez, oh, it cut you in two. But with me being totally isolated, I've got a wee chair at my my veranda window and I, I just uh, turn my head to the angle of the sun and I think I'm burnt today, you know, I put on some cream. I mean, what do you think? And by the way, I put an aftershave in it and it's boss. Can you smell it? How many has went to how many many went to the phone there to see if you could smell it, for goodness sake. Well, my programme producers and my advisors, um, what do you call them, Dominic uh, Cummins, um, they said I should maybe, although I say they do it every night, they think maybe you may get sick of me. So I'm going to ask for a wee survey for you. Um, oh, I see, oh, I wave to everybody. Okay. Um, whether A, do you want it every night? I mean, I've got plenty of material. Or maybe every second night? <laughs> Or once a week. Now it'd be nice if you just send a wee message in to see what you uh, what you prefer. I don't mind doing it every night, but Dominic thinks that uh, oh, I might get a wee bit stale, you know, and also I might end up with whiskey, um, arthritis or something like that. So um, uh, can you think about it anyway and see what you think. Now, John Lindsay, have you noticed? I've shaved, but I've shaved for a special occasion, and that is why I'm going to I'm doing my president's address tonight. Now, if folk don't know about any about bowls, playing bowls, it's not just going to be like that, because I'm going to talk about history, I'm going to show you some photographs. So, stay with me, and I think that you'll be really okay for that. So, um, well, listen, just in case everybody thinks... <laughs> What do you think my outfit? Eh? Okay. And just in case somebody thinks I'm going to get the joggers on. I've not got the joggers on. I've got trousers. Look at that. Fantastic. So. Back to the stage again. Now. This is the first time I've done a performance as the president. I was really chuffed. When the AGM they asked me to uh, be the president, and I've been present before, so is that no good? Being the president for a second time, but any penny dropped this afternoon, I'll actually have, I'll actually be a president for history. Do you know that? And you seen how's it? How's it going to be history? Because the virus is on the new, so I'm going to be a president when. The virus happened, so I don't know what they'll call me. Well, they'll be called me viral presidente. I'm not too sure. But anyway, uh, let's move on. I will explain all about uh, my club, Presbyterian Howie Bully Club, uh, later. But I want to start. Um, how do I say? Right. History. I'm a great believer in history. But the history I'm going to tell you is. You know, I come from Paisley, and my mother and father, they were bowling fanatics. And I mean bowling fanatics, and it goes on, and also my ancestors. Because uh, the club in Paisley was Charleston, and that was named after an area, Charleston at the time. And the herds were famous for winning competitions in various bits and pieces. 
So what I'd like to do is do a wee bit of history in that side of it. Um, uh, and how it all started with, with me. Now, I was brought up in a bone green, basically. Uh, and I think it was about 10 year old and I started marking ties. Now, inside the bowling club at Charleston, they had a bench. And if you were not up there before half past five and get in the queue, then you'd need chance. And you got a bob from Martin a tie, and that went towards my holidays. So that was you. When the first tie came on, then you asked, would you like a marker? And you went on, and you, my mum and dad told me the rules, what you got today, how you position the jack, and you to sit. Uh, in the bank and no move your feet because it puts the bowlers off, all these kind of things. So that's when I, I get into the bowling aspect as well. Um, and then as, as time went on, um, every year, if I was a boy, we went to Rossi every year for our holidays. Every year. And I'll tell you the reason how. From my mum and dad to play balls. And they played the Arbeg and the one up the hill and the, up the Serpentine, the Craig Moore. They played all these things. And the thing was, when I was a wee boy, it wasn't so bad for me because my older sister, Ina, the job was you go on the train, you went down to Wim's Bay, and you had to walk to the station all the way down that way to the boat, carrying this full set of balls and shoes. So I was really looking forward to that, you know, when I got a wee bit older, but uh, anyway, that was me. When I got a wee bit older and uh, I was strong enough after taking porridge in the morning, then I grabbed the bag of balls and I walked in and on the boat uh, and, uh, and you got a wee, in, a, in a way it was a wee treat because when you go to Rossi, oh, we're on a taxi, can we stay due to our bag? And no way was I going to carry a bag of balls for the pier to our bag. That is, if you know what Rossi is. So, that's how it happened. And every morning, we went to our bag for the Wapham show. Sometimes at night as well. And the our bag bowling club are very, very good, I must admit. They actually had a snooker table in the, in the clubhouse. And that's what I used to occupy my time. I was playing snooker and billiards uh, with some of the older members. And then that's when I got to know all about crib. Oh, anyway, that's a different story. So that was us. And then it was the Greenup Fair we always went to because my dad worked in Greenup. Um, and what happened was in the second week, it was our beg versus the world. And they'd all the bullers for Port Glasgow, Greenock, um, Gurok. And they all, they all uh, joined together and they were the uh, the world. Uh, and that was a competition. So moving away from that, then as I was, I think it was 15, 16, I joined the Charleston Bowling Club. And that's when I started to know about the history uh, of my family and ancestors. Hmm? So, and it was, uh, how do you put it, it got a bit of pressure on you because everybody thought you were going to be our champion. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't last long at the bowls because um, I played football as well, but I wasn't good at that either. Uh, and I hurt my ankle. So, I then took up refereeing. So I couldn't do ever in the same way. Uh, and I'll be telling you all my stories in refereeing one night, so uh, hold your hoosh and we'll see what happens there. So anyway... The history of my ancestors, etc. Right? Now, let me see. Can you see that? Okay. Well, come in a wee Right. That is my ancestors. Right? And I'll just read you the names. Now, if there's any for Paisley there and they're in connection with the Herd family, um, just let me know and I'll get a wee photograph it and send it up to you. So, who's in the photograph? We've got uh, William Herd, Jazz Herd, 
and Jazz Heard Jr. And look at the position. Now, Alistair Firth, that's what you call a photographer. Look at the way they're sitting there and the way they're dressed. Now, is that no immaculate? Absolutely brilliant. So that was that one. <coughs> now, I've still got it. The History of Charleston Bowling Club. And that was for 1863 to 1963. And then that... How's that for a picture? Now, the dress and then the way you're going there as well. And guess what? Guess who's all in it? There's a Charles Heard. Uh, uh, James uh, Scott was the president. Thomas Kells the vice president. And guess who's in the in the photograph? Now, John Lorimer, watch this. The guys in the bottom, left hand side, and he, and that was Harry Gardner, the greenkeeper. Bottom left. Now, John, I don't want you to turn up dressed like that, but um, how's that for a greenkeeper? Jeez, oh. So, uh, the, the, the herds. Actually, the challenge as well, again, back years ago, against an our family from Glasgow, and the majority of the time they beat them, you know. Um, so, and look at that photograph. Now, this is the, the visit to the Scottish Bowling Association Council in 1942. Look at that, eh? Look at that crowd. I bet it's not, much, I bet it's not a bigger council, uh, council now for the Scottish Bowling Association. Right, we'll move on a wee bit. Uh, my father uh, was champion a few times. Uh, his stepbrother was a champion as well. My father also was really called the champion of champions. That was all the champions of the bowling greens uh, in the Paisley area Play, played against each other. And he won, he won at the end as well. But my dad was a champion. But my mother was a creme de la creme. Because she, she was, she was can't be Scotland. Do you know that? And you know what I've still got here yet? Now watch this. This is for all you young bowlers and bowlers who don't remember this. But here we go. This is a programme for international matches and it was played at Berlahus and Bowling Green and that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 27th to 29th, 1949. What about that? And then my mother, my mother is that, and inside it gives you a list of all the players um, that it played, etc. Okay. Now, how's this? Now, I know we're going with the times regarding dress for bowling, etc. But it annoys me sometimes uh, the way we dress for the bowls. I think we're too casual now, and we used to be regimental. Don't get me wrong. It's all good money now, but you get new shirts and new, what it may be, in different colours. Great. But I'll tell you something. I prefer this. Now watch this. What do you think of this? This is the Scottish ladies team. Uh, Margate 1951. Now, what about that? Do you know a thing that's brilliant? Now, my mother is in the second row behind the woman with a white handbag. Now look at that. I mean, you had to be a certain distance with your skirts, etc. So that it was proper and that. But you know the thing that was great? The other thing I thought was great was, how many of you know what the name of the mascot is? What was that? No, it wasn't that. No, it wasn't that. Annie Laurie. <laughs> now, Annie Laurie, to my mind, was a symbol in the days. Now, I think, and I don't really know, because I've seen photographs of the young Scottish team and the big Scottish team, the women's team and the men's team that I've never seen a mask it before. They may have one, but I've not seen it shown. So, I'm going to suggest we should go back the way and have Annie Laurie. Now, look at her. She's absolutely beautiful. Anyway, that's me doing a wee bit of promotion together, so I'm going to put this down and move on. Right, what's the next bit here? I've done Rossi, 
and I've done Charleston, and I've told you. Um, now, I had an experience in the seventies because, and I'll be talking about it in, in some point in the future. I was seconded for Yarrows in Glasgow to a South African company called Yamco, and I was seconded there to assist the South African Navy down at Simonstown. And I stayed in a place called Musenberg, which was 18 miles from Cape Town. Now, Musenberg stood for Mouse Mountain. Now, that's a bit of education for you. <laughs> so, in the, uh, I was here, 75 to 78, I was on South Africa. And in 1976, I think, Anne said to me, how do you know Gordon start playing a wee game of bulls. So, and as one of the residents who stayed in the flats, he um, he played there and he said, I come on, I'll introduce you to. So I went there, put an application for him, um, and I was accepted. Now, why didn't you know that until, until I was accepted? That 99% of the membership were Jews. And in actual fact, it worked in favour for me. You know that. Um, because what happened was, <laughs> they turned and said, well, Billy, you've not got, uh, you've not got any blazers or club colours because you come from Scotland and you didn't bring your stuff away and you've not got any balls. I said, that's quite correct. No problem. Go to Joe Bloggs uh, in Music North Main Street. He'll fix you up with flannels, a blazer and a club tie. And we will supply you with a set of balls. It may be second hand, but we set of balls. I said, oh, that's very generous. But remember, <laughs> you must wear white socks every time you play. And if you don't wear white socks <laughs> every time you play, then you've got to ring the bell in the clubhouse and you put, I think it was equivalent to 50 pence. I think it was a rand, uh, 50 pence, and you put it in the wee dish. Um, so that was... Um, that was me. And in actual fact, I really enjoyed it. Now, I know we've got coaching now for blind bowlers and people with sight problems. And we've, we've, we've been coaching for the past couple of years. Now, can I tell you something? In 1977, I was asked to play <laughs> and assist the blind bowlers for the Cape Province. Now, how many years ago was that? And they were actually had blind bowlers playing, which I just thought it was, when I look back now, OK, we've progressed, but when I look back now, I had the opportunity uh, to play with blind bowlers there. And the, the standard of bowling there was, oh, every club, we had no chance. But the social side was absolutely amazing. Because I travelled about in the Western province, <laughs> um, and then this guy used to take me to the games in a Mustang, three gears I had. Uh, he used to be a retired professor. Geez, oh, and he took us on the roads, oh, and he smoked a pipe. But, oh, my God, he, he, I think he was a young Jackie Stewart in his days. So I travelled a bit in there, but we went to the clubs, and the clubs there were built to suit the weather. And a lot of them, in, especially in Cape Town. Because we went in there, they had air condition changing rooms, you had a swimming pool, you had a barbecue after you finished. And that was a different world altogether. So then, my claim to fame was, I was playing in the Saturday uh, league uh, for the Cape, for the Cape, Cape Town and District. <coughs> and I was, I was skipping. Uh, and it was a B team. So you had two leagues, the A team and the B team. So I was playing and it was a skip. So this end, and uh, my third went, do you think you could take that ball out, your last ball? And I said, oh, I'll try my best. Lo and behold, it must be no bad then. I took the, I chapped and lie on the ball. So I was getting a, they were getting the measure of the balls. Right? It turns out we scored an eight. Now, all the guys were all running up to me and started hugging me, etc. You know, going like, hugging me, and I'm going, what's the matter? Oh, 
you've made our, you've made our just bowling uh, history here. I says, how? He says, we are now a member of the A Club. I says, A Club? He says, aye. We'll get it signed with the opposing team. With the, you got the eight, they'll send it to the South African Bowling Association and you'll get a special badge. I said, oh. And that's what happened. Unfortunately, I don't hear how my bloody badges, but I'll tell you about it. It had a leaf on it and inside was a red eight. And I, I wore that in my blazer all the time. So um, it may not mean anything, but it means a lot to me. I mean, going out to South Africa and, and getting a special badge. Right, where are we moving on for now? For goodness sake, my wee notes here, see my producer. Um, I've done that, okay, I've done that wee bit there as well. Uh, done that wee bit. Uh, done that bit. Yep. Yeah. Right, I now get back to my present club. Um, I think it was something like 2006, 2007. Uh, a neighbour in uh, the flats I stay in asked me, Do you want to play bowls? And I says, aye, how no. So, I took up bowls with a Howie, Pressure Howie, a bowling club. Uh, and I must admit, they made me very welcome. Um, and you want to know something? There's something different in Pressure Howie Bowling Club for any other club I've played in, even in Paisley. Do you know where it is? They don't have a bar. We don't have a bar. Cups of tea, sandwiches and cakes, etc. Um, if we've got a special occasion, maybe a visiting club, then we can maybe have a wee drink. But, and we're going fine. Uh, and there's one thing, there's never any boxing matches. I mean, I used to see boxing matches on Basel, jeez, all in that, you know. But anyway, if we don't have any boxing matches, and that's a great idea. So, I'm going to promote them tonight. Where else have I got here? Hmm. Right. So, as I said to you, I've really enjoyed the comradeship, uh, and the ladies are absolutely brilliant. Oh, the home, the homemade baking. Oh, absolutely stopping. If you think electric bakery is bad, it's good. They're really good. So, listen, girls, if any, if you're watching now, uh, you can make me a special cake. See when this virus is finished, get the baking case cases. So, uh, that, that's where we are. I, I also uh, joined the Ambassador Indoor. Um, oh, I forgot to mention about the Howie. We've got a fantastic junior section. And I, I, I must admit, I'm, I'm really proud uh, of the people who started the junior section. We've got coaches and they also coach up in the Ambassador Indoor as well for the schools. Uh, and it's really great. In fact, I've got, a, I've got one of our young members I think Luke's only 13. And we've got him playing in our team for the Premier League and indoor. Oh, he's some, he's a shark. For his age, he's unbelievable. Anyway, talking about the, uh, the Premier League we're playing on Thursday night. This is another wee bit of history for me. I'm, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with us as well. Because we play in the Premier League and we're duff. But we enjoy playing there because we're meeting, how would I say... Uh, we're meeting the top guys. I'm, I'm talking about the real top guys. And anyway, in the same league as Paul Foster. So this is maybe about two years ago. Sorry, Paul, uh, if I bring this up, but I've got to say it. I think it was about two years ago, and we're playing against Paul's team. Hey, and they're good. But we, we played out our socks that night. And do you know, we beat Paul. And we didn't even play, even play the last end. And I must admit, he does it sometimes, he takes it quite serious. And he lost the place. He did. He flung the balls into the ditches, he kicked them on in the ditches, etc. And it was a quick shake hands with me. So, imagine me. I'm part of a team that beat the world champion. No, <laughs> that's the end of it, where it may be. So, uh, that, that's it. I think that's all the kind of things I've done here. What else have we got here? Aye. Right. Now, I don't like bringing it up, but let's see. 
This is the 29th, okay? And I was on earlier regarding the kilt walk. And I'm just going to ask you, if everyone even put a pound in the Whiteley's Retreat, if you look up the Facebook page uh, for Whiteley's Retreat, you'll get the details. Now, just a pound, I know it's difficult now with folk know from jobs and we don't know what's going to happen, but it'd be nice. I mean, I've got over a thousand followers, so if you all put a pound in, that'd be a thousand quid. And then Sir Tom Hunter, he puts 50% on that, so that'd be 1,500. Um, and at the moment, unfortunately, the Whiteley's is shut because of the situation with the virus. Uh, but we've got to keep things d down down there, you know, we've got to keep it uh, ticking over because, I'll tell you right now, see, once this virus is finished, the number of kids and their families who will need respite will be amazing because some of them at the present time are now, which is very difficult, they may not be getting their treatment because there are different things happening. So we'll be inundated uh, for the families to come down and get a respite and it's a magical place. So, and guess what? You thought I'd need whiskey tonight, but <laughs> I have got whiskey tonight. Um, and cheers, folk. And remember, day we survey if you want me to go every night, every second night, twice a week, whatever it may be. It's up to you. I've got plenty of stories. So, good night, everybody, and thanks very much for joining me. Bye bye.